Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming your 2014 Washington Business Hall of Fame laureate, Linda Hudson. There is so much I want to share with my audiences about what I have experienced to help them accelerate their success. I know what it's like to be different, not like anybody else in the room, and to still make an impact. My improbable journey is unique. This is an opportunity for you to learn firsthand what it takes to be an effective leader, the benefits of diversity, and the keys to success. Anyone can lead when the world is all unicorns and rainbows. But true leadership is revealed when the universe gets ugly, when the sky is falling and the bodies are flying. That's where courage, conviction, and accountability really come in. People expect leaders to take them forward, to bet on the future, and not to be paralyzed by fear and an inability to act. My experience has shown that you can only lead a team when people believe you're in the fray with them, that you succeed and sometimes fail together, but you will never abandon them or fail to support them. This kind of accountability and commitment to one another drives exceptional performance. Leaders define themselves in difficult times. You must rise above your fears and have the courage to make the best decision for your organization or business. When others question your decisions, and they will, you must have the conviction to follow through. And when it's just you making the final tough decision, you must be comfortable being the only one in the room. Leadership is lonely and hard, but it is rewarding. I have transformed businesses, revamped strategies, realigned organizations, enhanced cultures, and implemented leadership programs to develop leaders for the future. And I can help you do the same. Our world needs more leaders at every level of an organization who get things done and do them well. As an accomplished engineer, I am very disciplined in my approach to business decision making, really about most things in my life. But I've learned that business is all about people and relationships, and that is my real passion, people and helping others succeed. When it comes to business, diversity is not just a social program, and it's more than ethnicity and gender. It's about diversity of thought. Different ideas drive better business outcomes. Companies today have to reinvent themselves, transform and adapt to changing markets and volatile economies. New challenges mean new risk. Those companies and organizations that develop their people and the diversity of their workforces will have the competitive advantage. Our company our entire industry faces a coming exodus of talent and know-how as my generation approaches retirement. And one of our greatest responsibilities as leaders is developing the future leaders who can fill our shoes and developing the candidates who can fill theirs. But how can we expect to attract and retain the next generation of talent if we never take the time to listen? There's a tendency for people to assume that what works for their generation should also work for subsequent generations. For those of us who began our careers in the 70s and 80s, that means seven day work weeks, inflexible schedules, and rigid hierarchies. 
What's ironic about this attitude is that's exactly what my generation rebelled against in the 60s. Only now we're the guilty parties attempting to impose our values on everyone else. The challenge for the leader is to find a way to talk to all the generations in ways that make sense to them. I like to call this multiplexing. By the way, this is not the same as multitasking. Multiplexing is based on an engineering concept of one signal controlling many different systems. Think about all the controls required to fly an airplane. It's very similar to what a leader has to do to lead a workforce effectively and efficiently. We all have to continually learn new skills and evolve as our environments and workforces evolve. Stories can be a powerful way of, of, of making a point. And, and if someone's sitting next to you in, in your cube or your office or whatever, sharing your personal journey and, and what you've been through makes, gives people an awareness that they might not have had if they've never experienced such things. And, um, you know, I, I go back to the beginning as my daughter says, oh, mom, don't talk about the good old days. But, you know, back in the, uh, in the 70s when I got out of school, uh, women were not entitled to hold credit in their own name. And you know, they didn't pass Fair Credit Act until four years after I graduated from college. Uh, I was turned down for a mortgage because they wouldn't count my income because I might get pregnant, even though I made more money than my husband did. I mean, and, and so when you start pointing things out to people of what you've experienced and, and what you've been through, they, they begin to see things from a, a, a different point of view. And I, I think that's something back to, we can dialogue amongst ourselves here and and that's all well and good, but the power of this dialogue is when you take it back to your workplace. Do we want this to be a place employees have to work, or do we want it to be a place employees want to work? I think we all already know the answer. We just need to be bold enough to ask the question. Thank you all for coming. I hope you've all enjoyed SLC 2013 and your stay in Memphis. Safe travels on your journey home. Thank you. When I think of Linda, I think of somebody who has uh, an incredible work ethic, who cares a lot about the people in the organization, who plans uh, with a good deal of foresight, and who is a dynamic and inspiring leader. A pattern of success in, in tackling some extraordinarily difficult challenges in different companies and different organizations at different times in the defense industry over the last 40 years. And I can tell you, I would never bet against Linda. She's gonna, she's gonna find a way to lead her organization towards success no matter what. What's remarkable about Linda is that she's used her success to become a champion for diversity and inclusion for people from all walks of life. People will look first and foremost to the fact that she was the first woman in the defense sector to do just about everything. It's important not to lose sight of the fact that she outperformed most of her peers and competitors.